So I was reading this comment on our Facebook page. You're wrong, that E minor in American Pie is just a six chord. Uh, so wait, what, the two of five doesn't exist? Sure, in the key of G major, the six chord is an E minor chord. But is an E minor chord in G major always the six chord? Well, today I wanna to make a case for why this E minor could be, in the right context, something else. If you're new to MDEX Music, we create music books and apps, piano arrangements, and we discuss improvisation, songwriting, and sometimes we take music theory to strange and uncharted places. So subscribe and hit the bell, and join us for exclusive access to our ever-expanding library of music resources. So in our last video, we did talk about American Pie. We kind of zeroed in on the chorus and illustrated how it was in the key of G. Bye bye, Miss American Pie. Had all the earmarks of a key of G song, the one, the four, and the five. But it was until the end of the chorus that we get into this part uh, that's at question today. This will be the day that I die. That E minor to A7. This will be the day that I die. And then ultimately E minor to D7. But it's not this E minor that's the important clue here. It's the A7 after it. In a vacuum, yeah, if you're in the key of G, you would see this E minor as the sixth chord all day long, like it's used in the verse. Long, long time ago. That E minor is a sixth chord all day. But here, in the context of what we're doing at the end of the chorus, this will be the day that I die. It's not a six chord, it's a two of five. So yeah, I'm gonna say that this E minor in the key of G doesn't always have to be the sixth chord. And this is important because writing music is not only about using chords we like or that feel right. Sure, that's a huge part of it, but sometimes it's useful to draw ideas from harmonic techniques that we know to be effective. You know, when you get stuck and you can't find a chord you like or you just wanna make your chord progression more interesting. You can always trust and use these techniques to move forward and break through any block that you've encountered. So as I said before, the key to this problem lies in the A7 chord that follows the E minor. This will be the day that I die. This A7 is a secondary dominant, the five of five. See how it precedes the D7 chord in the progression? Remember, an A chord in the key of G is supposed to be a minor chord, the two chord. But here, A is a dominant chord and is being used as a secondary dominant. And moving from the five of five to the five is what we call a half cadence. And here's a bonus for you. If you want to end a phrase on the five chord effectively, you can always use this half cadence. Don't forget, the 5-7 to 1 is the most important cadence in music because the 5-7 desperately wants to go to the 1. So it's very tricky to convincingly end a phrase on the 5 chord. Look, if I play G, C, D7, it's hard to come up with a melody that ends there because your ears want to go back to G right away. But if you introduce the A7 before the G, which is the 5 of 5, then you're making the D a target, a temporary home. And now you can come up with plenty of melodic ideas that would end comfortably on the five chord. It has a sort of automatic resolution to it, even though in this key, it's our five chord and wants to go back to G. And when we listen to American Pie, that's exactly what the A7 is doing there, creating a half cadence to the D7 chord. And the phrase ends beautifully, allowing the next phrase to start on the one chord with ease. So, what is the E minor that precedes the A7 even doing there? Even further, why is this E minor being played twice? In tonal harmony, the 5, 7 to 1, like we've said so many times, it's the most important chord progression in music, right? We're moving from the most tense region, the dominant region, to the tonic region, our home. But how did we get to the dominant region in the first place? Well, the smoothest way is to come from the subdominant region. This clockwise movement around the tonal landscape is the best way to travel the map. That's why I was playing G, C, D7, G, to set your ears to hear G as the tonic. 
This is a tonic, subdominant, dominant, tonic trip around the map. And that's why we talk so much about the 451 or the 251. Preparing the dominant with the subdominant creates a complete picture of the map. It offers the perfect tour around our musical landscape. The whole point is to see your progression from the perspective of this clockwise movement through the different regions of the map. A subdominant, dominant, tonic perspective that takes you on a gradual and believable journey through the music. And in the key of D major, the E minor is the two right there in the subdominant region. So if we want to make D our home, the best way is to go around the map by playing E minor to A7 to D. But in the key of G, D is in the dominant region. So if we want to make D a temporary home, we can use the subdominant to the dominant of D, a 2-5-1 in D, for example. And again, that's E minor to A7 to D. So this E minor in American Pie looks like a six chord, but again, it's not. Sure, the first time we get to it, it feels and sounds like the six. But as soon as the A7 comes in, its real purpose is revealed to us. It's like a wormhole in the map. On the first iteration of E minor to A7, the E minor lives in both places at the same time. It functions as a tonic chord, the six, but it also functions as a secondary dominant chord, the two of five. And that's why repeating this progression is crucial. By repeating E minor to A7, we cement the role of the E minor as the two of five. This E minor is no longer a tonic chord. It is no longer Aeolian. It's now a Dorian sounding chord, a related two, the two of five. The only problem in American Pie is that the A7 is not used the second time. The progression goes straight from E minor to D7. So is this E minor back to being a six chord or has the preceding two of five to five movement completely changed our perspective of this E minor chord? Can we still talk about a half cadence in this case? Moving from the subdominant to the tonic is known as a plagal cadence. So is this a plagal half cadence? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Hope this was helpful, and of course, we will post related content for our exclusive members. If you're not a member yet, you can become one by clicking on the join button or the link provided. If you like content like this, we have plenty of awesome books and apps on our website, mdex.com. And by the way, if you get there and we're not on sale, don't get anything right away. Instead, make sure to subscribe to our mailing list. We do a sale every month and you can only find out about them through our email list. So go to index.com and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll catch you next time.